Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our study of the harmonic oscillator, the quantum harmonic oscillator. Recall that we've computed all of the eigenvalues for the time-independent Schrodinger equation, and now we're going to compute the eigenstates. So we've developed all of the, the, the apparatus that we need for this. Now we just need to put it together. OK. Now remember that um, if we have an eigenstate, ket eta, we can derive another eigenstate that has eigenvalue 1 larger. OK. Keep that in mind. Well, I can mention it here. So if we know what the lowest eigenstate is, because re remember there is a lowest eigenvalue corresponding to h bar omega over 2, if we knew the, the value for that, then we could just act on it over and over and over again with the raising operator and get all of the eigenstates corresponding to all of the higher eigenvalues. So a little bit of terminology. The eigenstate with the smallest eigenvalue we denote as ket zero, and that's generally called the ground state. Sometimes vacuum state is used, but we'll use the, the phrase ground state. And we're always going to normalize things, so the ground state is normalized to 1. Now, as I just said, if we know the ground state, we can act on it over and over again using the formula I just showed you with the raising operator. And if we act on it n times, we get the nth eigenstate. OK? The Cn is a constant that we have to choose at each step for normalization. So we require normalization. And then you can use this condition along with 3.89 and see that that's the case. Check that. And then once we get an expression for the ground state, and we can start computing these normalization constants, we will see that this is what they turn out to be. This is a traditional exercise that I always assign, but uh, let's save that for the moment. We want to first get a hold of the ground state, because everything, everything else will come from that. So remember the expression we derived for the eigenvalues. Okay, so we need to determine the ground state. And that's going to be a, a function, right? A solution of the uh, time independent Schrodinger equation. Okay. All right, here's the way we get a hold of that. If we have the ground state, ket zero, if we act on it with A, you can't go any lower than zero, so you get zero. Now, let's write that out a little more clearly, and you can see that we're going to get a differential equation that we can solve for ket zero, the ground state. So what is A? A is P minus I omega x. P and x are operators acting on the ground state. OK. This ground state, let's call it psi 0 of x in line with solutions of a differential equation. Let's put in the uh, expressions for the operators. P is what? It's h bar over i d by dx acting on psi 0 of x. And we get h bar over i psi 0 prime, the derivative, minus i m omega x, the multiplication by the coordinate psi 0 of x. Or this equation. 
Okay, that's an ODE that you can solve. I probably have solved. And if you solve it, you get the Gaussian. Here it is again. Now, if we normalize that, you have this Gaussian integral again that we've already seen when we dealt with wave packets. You get this for the normalization constant. Okay. So that gives you I'm having a technical problem here. That gives you the uh, ground state. And then what you can do is you can act on that over and over and over again with the uh, raising operator and you will get all the higher eigenstates. Okay, that's the end of this chapter. Obviously there's some details to be worked out with respect to computing eigenstates for higher than the ground state, and, but that's, that's an algebraic problem. That Now that we've found the ground state, isn't acting on it over and over again with the raising operator. And we will, we will do those technical details in exercises and discuss in the problems classes. Okay, so that completes chapter three. Next, we're going to go to chapter four, the quantum theory of angular momentum. And that's gonna be truly three-dimensional, otherwise angular momentum wouldn't be that interesting. And so we'll pick up with that next time. So until next time, stay safe. Bye, everybody.